Today's translucent blue shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. At the tail end of the 1990s, Apple went through a dramatic reinvention. Steve Jobs returned to the company and famously said to the engineers, I like blue stuff. Make everything blue now. And so the company went from producing adorable beige boxes like these to these beautiful futuristic computers that were as powerful as they were blue. Anyway, the early days of the transition weren't all smooth sailing and this particular blue and white G3 is special and boy does it have some quirks. So stay tuned. And if you pine for those innocent, whimsical days in the 90s and early 2000s where high tech meant translucent, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. In 1998, Apple and a newly re-CEO'd Steve Jobs wowed both the tech world and consumers with a radical new computer design, the iMac G3 in Bondi Blue. Standing in stark contrast to its beige box contemporaries, the iMac sought to reimagine home computing, and it found wild success. Apple's professional machines, though, retained their beiginess, or at least for a while, unless you count this little handle right at the top there. That's actually Bondi Blue. But pro-consumers really wanted in on those friendly blue vibes. So in 1999, Apple discontinued the Power Mac G3 and introduced the Power Mac G3 which we now retroactively refer to as the blue and white for fairly obvious reasons. The blue and white Power Mac G3 was a dramatic reinvention of Apple's professional machine, both in style and performance. It had a lot of firsts, both in the professional Mac line and for the Mac in general. It was the first with Firewire and the first Pro Mac with USB. But unlike the iMac, Apple was also gracious enough to retain a single ADB port for all of your legacy professional doodads. Thank God, my clicky number pad. Along the side of the case, there was the famous latch, allowing for tool-free access to the quite upgradable guts, where this particular early Power Mac G3 gets a little interesting. I'll have to bring you in closer to show you why right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website all about the features and quirks of these early, revolutionary Power Mac G3s. I could build it in just minutes with Squarespace's new Next Generation Fluid Engine which features powerful drag and drop technology and enables you to customize every detail of your customer's experience on desktop and mobile. That's on top of optimizing for SEO, managing a mailing list, watching your analytics, and much more. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, if you had one of these bad boys back in the day, chances are you remember it being an IDE machine, but not this one. This one is Ultra 2 SCSI from the factory. That's right, this is the original blue and white G3 Mac with 128 megs of RAM, 400 megahertz, and Ultra 2 SCSI for a very interesting reason. To show you why, let's uh, pop this thing open. It turned out that early versions of this machine shipped with a very unreliable IDE controller chip to the point where Apple just put a SCSI card in the machine from the factory with a SCSI hard drive. In fact, this continued to be an option for the machine from the factory after they put a different IDE controller chip in here, but not this one. This is one of the original ones. And you can validate that by looking at the IDE chip on the motherboard, which is right back here. On the very earliest of these blue and white G3s, this chip here marked CMD will end with U2 at the end of that part number. That is the original finicky, faulty, doesn't work very well IDE controller chip. 
If your chip ends instead with 402, then you have a revision 2. Anyway, this Adaptech card is made for Apple. It has an Adaptech part number there and then says Mac Apple. And yeah, it has this neat port up top, which I forget the name of. We have a connector on the back for external SCSI peripherals, so I can use my jazz drive with this. Pretty sweet. But I'm curious how well this will work with weird operating systems. We're going to install the final version of Apple Rhapsody on this thing, released as Mac OS X Server 1.2. If you've never heard of Rhapsody, it's an interesting story that I've done some videos on in the past, but the short version is that Apple acquired Steve Jobs' next company for the Unix-based Next Step operating system, which they slowly transitioned to become the base of Mac OS X. It's a very interesting jumble of elements of both of the operating systems. Now, I suppose we'll need a, a monitor and a keyboard and stuff. Heck yeah! Ugh. And here is our finalized setup. The Trinitron actually looking quite nice with this blue and white G3. And I've got the matching keyboard for the blue and white G3 and the matching hamster mouse, which little known fact was an official Apple accessory. All right, so we're booted into the installer here, which is actually just running Mac OS 9. So we do have a previous install of 8.6, which I just want to completely wipe. So we're just going to reinitialize this. Mac OS 10 extended. All right, and then I guess we'll just go ahead with install Mac OS 10 server. Yeah, look at all this cool stuff. BSD subsystem, Emacs, OmniWeb, which is the next step web browser ported to Mac OS X server, which is, again, the final version of Rhapsody. But yeah, everything's selected, so let's install. The installer was then able to find a pre-selected installation target. All right, well, I've tried every version of Rhapsody up on the Macintosh Garden, and none of them want to work, so I can only assume that they don't like this SCSI card for some reason. Okay, so I have an idea. It might not work, but let's try to use the empty IDE socket here uh, to try to find a hard drive that'll work with this thing that we can install Rhapsody to because hopefully Rhapsody will be much happier with IDE over the uh, SCSI card, which I'm still very surprised it can't see. I want to try to use this 4 gigabyte industrial disk on module, which is an IDE flash drive, basically. They're slow, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be faster than an old 5400 RPM IDE hard drive. Uh, the only issue is... The IDE controller in this system is extremely finicky when it comes to what drives it will be compatible with. So I'll be very happily surprised if it works with this four gig module here. Uh, if not, I guess I'll try spinning hard drives until I find one that it likes. So I guess uh, jump cut to trying to install Rhapsody on this disk on module. Check it out, that worked. We are installing Rhapsody, Mac OS X server, onto the industrial flash storage module. These machines aren't unreliable. They just need a little extra love. All right, we made it to the setup assistant. Just run through here real quick with a very safe and secure complicated password. Obviously, turn all of the servers on. Built-in Ethernet. Uh, I don't know. Will it connect to the router with DHCP? I guess we'll find out. Wait, Apple Talk name is going to be Blue Hemian Rhapsody. <laughs> all right, first boot of Mac OS X server. I'm going to log in as... Well, I'll probably log in as root. Yeah, look, the SCSI disk is unreadable. Why don't you like the SCSI disk? All right, let's launch 
the OmniWeb web browser. <laughs> Look at that startup screen. What a logo. Oh man, it went away too fast. All right, are we online? We are not, okay. Try to rectify that. Okay, so I brought up the terminal and we do see the router. So if I ping 192.168.1.1, there's the router. Oh look, it won't launch Network Manager, which is the open step networking configuration. I guess it really wants me to use the Rhapsody settings here. Interesting. Default router, 192.168.1.1. Host name, of course, is going to be Bluehemian Rhapsody because I can't get enough of that pun. Requires restart, son of a gun. All right, restart successful. Let's try our omniweb.app once again. Oh, I think it's working because it's now confused about redirects. <laughs> Sweet. All right, let's see here. Frogfind.com. There we are, the world's best search engine rendered in Rhapsody. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is fun. This is fun. Oh, it works great, actually. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Browsing the modern internet on Apple Rhapsody with frog find in OmniWeb. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's see what other fun stuff is on here. All right, if we go right to the root of the drive here, we have local applications. Now system applications, there we go. Here is all of the Rhapsody slash OpenStep applications. Here we go, demos. Good old boink out. Still works. It's been there since next step on black original 68K hardware. And here it is. Ah, lovely. And our good old chess.app, which has made its way from next step to open step to Rhapsody to Mac OS X. Awesome. All right, now check this out. If we go under the Apple menu here, we have an option called Mac OS. And this is the so-called blue box system where we can actually run Mac OS Classic inside of Rhapsody, similar to the classic environment in Mac OS 10. And that was a weird old school PowerPC startup chime. I did not expect to hear that startup chime coming out of this Mac. Yeah, so here we have just a fully functional Mac OS 8.6 with apparently access to the whole system. You know, it's not running under emulation or anything. It's just running on the hardware. This sees PowerPC G3 400. But then I think if we shut down this, we should go right back into Rhapsody. Yep, <laughs> that's pretty sweet. And the Macintosh Garden works pretty well under OmniWeb here. And we can hopefully download stuff like uh, the version of Quake for Rhapsody. Wow, this runs way better than I expected on here. Look at that. That is smooth. Yeah, this is buttery smooth. I'm not any good at it. <laughs> So can you believe it was extremely finicky trying to install weird operating systems on a computer famous for being extremely finicky? Color me surprised. Anyway, I have a bunch of silly ideas for this very early Power Mac G3 blue and white. Now that we figured out how to get stuff booting on it, maybe I'll see if there's a bigger disco module that works and uh, we could do something stupid like install every developer preview of Mac OS X and the public beta. Anyway, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching.
And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Camilo Noceda, Chris Algreta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George F. Rosansky, Greg Rutke, Harris Brody, James Fryman, Jason Papaz, Jesse Ezel, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowell, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.